sex must be a subset uh -huh. of family and marriage life. Okay. That it is taught within that structure. Mm -hmm. There is a man, there mm -hmm. is a woman. This man and a woman come together and they reproduce. They give us a child. They procreate. Mm -hmm. So the children, those who are below the age of 18, must be protected by the government from these people who are molesting them sexually. Mm -hmm. And the community and the Christians must come together to protect the children from, from sexual molestation. Mm -hmm. That would be the attitude. And then those who are older than that then must understand the place of sex in the society. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying don't have sex. All we are saying is that there is a right time for it. Yes. 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 So wait until you are ready for the responsibility that comes mm -hmm. with the outcome of sexual intercourse mm -hmm. and then take charge of your responsibility. <laughs> Growing up as a child, as a young person, as an adult, somehow along the way, we get to learn about sex. We get to learn about sexuality. And uh, in the recent times, uh, there's a certain term that has come across, and that is the term comprehensive sexuality education, CSE. Uh, I know some of us call it differently uh, like I, I got to realize just a few days ago interacting with uh, a doctor here who is a special guest that uh, it is not comprehensive sex or sexual it is comprehensive sexuality education and for some time uh, you can tell in, in the society in our communities you know people are still trying to grapple with this term trying to grapple with this whole idea and wondering what does it entail but before we go that allow me just to introduce uh to you our very own uh special guest uh he's an amazing gentleman and a big blessing uh to this nation and, and the global fraternity as a whole in the medical field and uh, let me give him an opportunity just to go ahead and uh, tell us who he is dr wahomengari uh, thank you very much um my name is wahomengari uh, I am a child of God. Uh, I am the husband of Mercy. I am the father to Ngari, Nyingi, and uh, uh, Gadoni. Uh, I am the grandfather to um, uh, a beautiful, a beautiful, uh, two beautiful girls. Um, one called Mudoni, the other one called Washera. Uh, and uh, I am an obstetrician gynecologist. Uh, so I have dedicated my life to looking after the woman uh, in and out of pregnancy. Uh, and I am happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And you also sit in certain boards. Uh, yes. One key uh, one with the Catholic uh, Church. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I am the current chairman of the Catholic Doctors Association. Mm. Uh, but I'm also a board member of the Kenya, Christians, uh, Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. Wow. Um, and just, just so that we are clear, um, I, I finished my first degree in medicine in 1991 mm -hmm. and my master's in 2000. Okay. Uh, so um, I think being married for 30 years and being a gynecologist, wow. uh, I qualify to talk about sex. True. Don't you think True. so? By all means. <laughs> By all means, Dr. Ari. Yes. Good. Yes, yes. So, mm. so what is, um, help us understand, what is CSE? What is CSE? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, comprehensive sexuality education is a euphemism. Mm -hmm. um, is a name that has been used to uh, portray one thing, mm -hmm. but it is packed with meaning. And uh, unless you unpackage that meaning, um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds almost nice, almost useful, that our children should learn sexuality comprehensively. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, But the, the genesis... Uh, of comprehensive sexuality education is something that is called sexual health and rights. Okay. And for us to be able to unpackage uh, sexual health and rights, it's important to go to the source. Mm -hmm. um, the term uh, sexu sexual health and rights mm -hmm. has been used in many documents, including mm -hmm. international documents uh, like the, the S S uh, SGDs. And there are even um, certain um, measures that we are supposed to achieve as countries under the UN. Okay. Um, 
but for a long time it hadn't been properly defined. Uh, in 2015, mm -hmm. WHO put together a book that is called Sexual Health, Human Rights mm -hmm. and the Law. Mm -hmm. And in that document, they then describe what sexual health is. And okay. they say it encompasses access to abortion. Okay, so um, access to terminating pregnancies wow. at will. Mm -hmm. It says um, it also encompasses uh, um, same-sex relationships mm -hmm. and legalizing them. Mm -hmm. uh, it also encompasses legalizing same-sex unions. Mm -hmm. It also encompasses legalizing uh, prostitution. Wow. It also uh, encompasses uh, access to contraceptives for mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. without parental ac uh, uh, consent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it goes on to say that... Um, uh, provision of abortion mm -hmm. is very important for adolescents, mm -hmm. uh, even again without parental uh, consent. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it says comprehensive sexuality education is an important component mm -hmm. of sexual health and rights. Wow. Now, the uh, comprehensive sexuality education or sexual health and rights uh, then says sex is a right and every human being has a right to enjoy sexual pleasure and uh, from as early as you can. Mm -hmm. So from the age of four or five, uh, we can encourage our children to touch themselves mm -hmm. in their private parts so that they can experience uh, sexual pleasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, as they grow older, maybe about eight or ten, then we can encourage them to have uh, sex. Mm -hmm. And we encourage them to have sex, uh, boys and boys, girls and girls, boys and girls, mm -hmm. just so that they can find their orientation. Wow. And because sex is for fun, mm. then pregnancy in, in comprehensive sexuality education is mm -hmm. deemed as a very bad side effect mm -hmm. of sex for pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So you then must deal with it when it happens. So if, we, if people are having sex for pleasure mm -hmm. and pregnancy arises, then it is not what we intended. So it's very important that the children are taught how to use contraceptives mm -hmm. so that they don't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And if they do, they then that, that pregnancy is unwanted. Wow. So you provide for them abortion services. Mm -hmm. And that is comprehensive sexuality education. Wow. Yes. But now looking at it... Um, it sounds as if, uh, and now that you've mentioned, it's coming from the West. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it a Trojan horse that is uh, uh, promoting, you know, Western liberal aspects to do with uh, sexual freedom and moral relativism? Well, the the when we call it West, um, then it becomes uh, uh, troubling mm -hmm. because uh, we have people um, who are Africans who have embraced that kind of lifestyle. Okay. Uh, let us say that the lifestyle of same-sex relationships mm -hmm. and liberal sex mm -hmm. uh, is is a thing from the sexual revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, a man uh, separates himself from God. Okay. And uh, marriage becomes a hindrance, a limitation, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore sexual freedom is is the ultimate so sex and sexual pleasure is the ultimate pleasure mm -hmm. a human being can access mm -hmm. and anybody who says you can't get it then is standing in your way mm -hmm. and if sex is for pleasure then it doesn't matter who or what you're having it with mm -hmm. you see it, it's just uh, the limitation is your imagination mm -hmm. what we I should like that. The, your limitation yes. Is your imagination. Is your imagination. Yes. So in other words, you so can do as much as you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you with imagine. anything that you want. Wow. Uh, whether male, female, animal, it doesn't matter really. Mm -hmm. the, um, what we would need to ask ourselves is who is the ultimate beneficiary or what is the outcome of this kind of behavior? Mm -hmm. And if you have same-sex relationships mm -hmm. and you have um, provision of abortion mm -hmm. and provision of contraceptives, the one outcome that you will get is a rapid decline in population. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what has happened is that the sexual revolution has been combined with reduction of population, and mm -hmm. that is what today is sexual and reproductive health and rights. So it has two things. 
it will destroy family mm -hmm. and you destroy family mm -hmm. you destroy communities mm -hmm. and once you destroy families nobody wants to get pregnant mm -hmm. uh, nobody mm -hmm. wants to have a baby and raise them alone mm -hmm. so uh, the the um, population decline is inevitable wow so that is the the end product and that is why mm -hmm. even that book i'm referring to mm -hmm. called sexual health human rights and the law mm -hmm. was co-authored who is the main author mm -hmm. but it was co-authored by the undp which is the arm of the UN that deals with population uh, control. control. Yes, so and the World that's Bank. There's something cooking there. And the World Bank uh -huh. is also a co-author of this document. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, today you'll hear that uh, one of the biggest problems we have is um, uh, a document called the ACP EU, mm -hmm. uh, African Caribbean Pacific EU mm -hmm. Economic Agreement. Mm -hmm. And this agreement is supposed to be to, to replace, the, um, it's uh, supposed to be an economic agreement. Mm -hmm. But in it, they have introduced sexual and reproductive health and rights mm -hmm. as some of the things governments must introduce to mm -hmm. receive money. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, the, the, the there is a connection agenda. there. Yes. Now, from the spiritual point of view, mm -hmm. is if every child we have is a spirit that we have to take back to God, mm -hmm then the child must be brought up in faith. Mm -hmm. If the child grows up mm -hmm. in this behavior mm -hmm. or adapting this behavior, then we have lost a soul. True. So for us as a kingdom, then there is an, uh, an element where we have only one person who would benefit mm -hmm. when children are drawn away from God. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the, the father of lies. Wow, wow. So instead of True. trying to dig up who is this, who is sponsoring, who is this, just look at what is the end product and who are the beneficiaries. True. So those who are running the world today who want to reduce population, mm -hmm. then sexual and reproductive health and rights is a very useful tool. Uh -huh. And it will and help them achieve, achieve their yes. goal at the end of the and day. And those who are anti-God, who are anti-Christian, mm -hmm. it's also a very useful s tool for destroying souls. Wow. Yes. And, and, and I feel as though um, that specific program is targeting certain parts in the world, and Africa being one of them. But yes. the virtue that, uh, I mean, looking at the, uh, the average age, mm -hmm. you know, of, of, of the African population, yes. is, uh, they say it's 19 years, you yes. know, and we are the youngest uh, continent yes. in the world. Yes. So it's as if somebody is trying to press an agenda mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe because something is happening where they are and mm -hmm. they feel uh, in the next 100 years or so, in the next 50 years, mm -hmm. I, I read an article where somebody mentioned that uh, in the, by 2030, mm -hmm. you know, by 2050, mm -hmm. um, uh, four out of every four people out here, mm -hmm. one of them will be a, will be a black man. You know, and, and, and I feel as though somebody is trying to, you know, make us go in a certain manner. And it's very sad, mm -hmm. just as you've mentioned, that bit has been tied to the economic uh, aspect or the economic face of, you know, of, mm -hmm. of how we do how we do life. And, and you know what's happening with the African countries. We are in need <laughs> of money, including Kenya. So somebody says, I have money for you, but on this other hand, you must implement this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, it, the, if you understand it as a global agenda, mm -hmm. then you will understand it has already been applied in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It has already been applied in the U.K. Mm -hmm. It has been applied in China. And uh, in those countries, population growth is reversing. There are some countries in Europe today who cannot replace themselves because mm -hmm. you need at least 2.5 children which is three children mm -hmm. for you to maintain your population not to oh. grow it oh. three we, children yes oh. and we have populations that have um, uh, 1.7 mm -hmm. um, in, in in europe mm -hmm. uh, so you're saying we have communities in the west today who will not be able to replace themselves mm -hmm. So the, the, the globalists, the mm -hmm. people who are running this agenda of population uh, reduction, mm -hmm. are not targeting Africans. It's the whole world. Oh, okay. It's just that they've sorted out everybody else. Now the, now the, 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 the people who are still multiplying and Africans. increasing is Africans. Wow. So for whatever reason they want to reduce world population, uh, mm -hmm. you see, for you to understand this is very complex. 
Um, there is something called eugenics, mm-hmm. where some people believe they're superior to others, mm-hmm. okay? And that there is this collection of, of uh, royals, of mm-hmm. people who are, uh, are beyond the others. Mm, more special than others. Yes, and, and they, they control a large percentage of world economy. Mm-hmm. And they feel threatened mm-hmm. by everybody else, especially if you are poor. Mm-hmm. Because in, in capitalism, they can only make money if you spend. Mm-hmm. If you're not spending, as far as they are concerned, your liability. Mm-hmm. But you see, if you look at population as an asset, mm-hmm. Africa has many young people. Yes. And they're not employed. Mm-hmm. The thing is, not to worry about employment, but to think about engagement. Mm-hmm. What is this these young people can do and what can they be facilitated to do yes. to generate wealth for the continent? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being employed is just paid up slavery. Mm-hmm. So we could look at our youth as, as an asset and mm-hmm. train them not to seek employment, but to actually create employment opportunities mm-hmm. and generate wealth. True. In which case, then they become an asset. True, true. But the people who want to reduce world population mm-hmm. make us look at population mm-hmm. as as a as a um, as a drawback, like it is negative. Wow. If you're many, it is bad. Mm-hmm. But it is because they have an agenda. Mm. The, the, uh, uh, if we can tap into the talent mm-hmm. of our African uh, our African youth. Mm-hmm. and just develop them and allow them to, to grow and generate wealth, mm-hmm. Africa would be very progressive. I agree. But so long as we have that attitude planted in us, mm-hmm. that we are too many and we need to reduce, mm-hmm. and when somebody brings you the reduction, population mm-hmm. reduction agenda, mm-hmm. they also bring you the tool mm-hmm. so that you can kill yourself uh, wow. in the process, wow. and they fund it for you. <laughs> At yeah. the same time. At the same time. A, a bit so sad. A bit it's, sad. It's very sad. Yeah. And, and I'm just mm. wondering, um, mm. do you feel we are doing enough as a, as, as a nation just to, you know, to understand this whole dynamic that pertains to CSE? Uh, I've, I've heard in certain circles, and this is basically the concern mm. with some people out here, right here in Kenya. Um, it, it's as if the government is, is inclined Mm-hmm. you know, to mm-hmm. have this being introduced in our institution. Mm-hmm. The other day I was talking to somebody and they said uh, it's possible that they recently just changed the terminology mm-hmm. from comprehensive sexuality education mm-hmm. to comprehensive health education. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I stand to be corrected, but it's as if the Ministry of Education, you know, is saying we are rolling this thing out. Yes, now this is the mechanism. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are many people in government who are ignorant mm-hmm. of what is going on. Mm-hmm. There are few people in strategic positions mm-hmm. in certain departments in government mm-hmm. who know and maybe are being facilitated to open doors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, may, you might find uh, the policymakers are a little blind. Now, if you are a desperate government and you are lacking money, and somebody comes with money uh, to help you mm-hmm. develop certain things, then it's easy to take it. Oh, wow. So, so we have um, uh, um, an, a national uh, population development council. Mm-hmm. Okay, a national develop, uh, population development council, mm-hmm. and this is structured in the same way as the UNDP. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's supposed to help uh, reduce population. Now, if we come to that organization and we give it funding and uh, we encourage um, that organization of government to facilitate development of certain policies, Mm -hmm. and within those policies, we then include what it is we need to make sure comprehensive sexuality education lands in schools, Mm -hmm. then it is possible for it to happen. So policy development becomes a major target Mm -hmm. of those who um, want to change our culture. Mm -hmm. The other other part that is used is laws. Mm -hmm. So every time you want to develop um, a health law, Mm -hmm. um, public health law, or you want to to have a national health law, Mm -hmm. then again they pay for you to have um, the the technical team. Mm -hmm. And within that technical team, they'll have their people. 
and within that team then they will be able to put their agenda mm -hmm. into your law development so policy mm -hmm. and law mm -hmm. then become areas that are funded by international organizations to mm -hmm. change policy so when we are having the CBC coming in mm -hmm. and we are going to change the, the, the structure of our education system, mm -hmm. again, um, engineered by them, it is mm -hmm. basically the, the, the change of concept doesn't come from within. Wow, it's from outside. It's from outside. And when you are changing to the new system, mm -hmm. which then sounds very good on the outside mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually would be of benefit to the people, certain elements within that will try and influence the, the, um, the curriculum mm -hmm. so that the curriculum, one part of the curriculum is actually developed and funded by them and they're able to put in uh, some of Whatever that stuff. Yeah. So in the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. um, they, they, they funded the development of, of something that was called the Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health mm -hmm. uh, Policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, which um, uh, came to an end in 2015 and mm -hmm. is being replaced now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was the reproductive health policy mm -hmm. uh, that, again, they funded. And in those, they had brought in the concept of sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mm -hmm. Now, through KCPF, uh, we were able to get involved in the development of the reproductive health policy. And we were able to clean it up and we removed uh, most of those um, things they had put in it that were not good. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they now have gone to court to try and oppose this policy. So for the first time, we have a policy that is consistent with uh, our moral values. Oh, that's good news. And uh, because of that, then they are not very happy. So th there is a way Christians can engage. Okay. Uh, instead of letting things happen, Mm -hmm. get to understand the Ministry of Health and Policy Development is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Education and Policy Development is very sensitive. And the, the National um, Population Control uh, Council um, is again a very sensitive area that needs to be watched very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, then our attitude needs to change from that of being beggars True. To, to solution providers. I totally agree. Yes, let, let us not seek solutions that will come with money and, an, and, and a fixed agenda. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a problem? Do our children need to understand their sexuality? Do our mm -hmm. children need to understand um, how to manage themselves? Yes, there is a problem. There is a problem. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm happy to hear that mm. uh, there are certain measures going into place. Mm. Uh, and I feel definitely uh, there has to be a voice. We mm. need a voice in, in those forums, in those yes. policy developments, mm. uh, in, those, in those ministries. Mm. Uh, but as, as this whole matter is you know, being rolled out, and as you said, yes, mm. there are certain efforts and uh, there are certain gains mm. that we've made. Mm. I'm just wondering, where does this leave a parent? You know, where, where does it re leave the parent? Because I feel as though, um, uh, as it is, mm. you know, it, it, it's possible that uh, with the CSE it would undermine, you know, the place of uh, parental authority, uh, the place of um, parental guidance on matters to do with uh, mm. sexuality mm. and moral development. Yes, uh, let's, let's, um, let's come back to the issue about sex education and ask ourselves whether we need to teach sex education. Mm -hmm. And uh, my contention is that we don't, we don't need to teach sex education. In fact, if we teach sex education, we are going to destroy our children. Mm -hmm. And the reason is this. We are supposed to teach our children family life. We are supposed to teach our children what the family means and why the family is important in the community. Mm -hmm. So we would then teach our children that the sexual act is actually a gift from God for us to create new souls and to bring children into this world. True. Okay? Mm -hmm. That responsibility doesn't end with giving birth. Mm -hmm. That responsibility starts with giving birth, that this child must be brought up in the fullness of knowledge of God they must understand how to relate to one another mm -hmm. and then they must understand that they themselves need to form a family and propagate uh, the next generation so that mm -hmm. sex is not a standalone subject 
it should never be taught as a standalone subject okay because once you remove it from family and you remove it from marriage mm-hmm. then you have destroyed family mm-hmm. you, you, you see where the catch is mm-hmm. don't teach sex education to the children sex must be a subset uh-huh. of family and marriage life okay that it is taught within that structure mm-hmm. there is a man there mm-hmm. is a woman this man and a woman come together and they reproduce they give us a child they procreate and that child would need care for 24 years before they can become independent of the parents okay. and that is serious business that the family is not a thing the family is actually an institution mm-hmm. that is 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 um is responsible for bringing life and nurturing and structuring mm-hmm. that life yes. for the next generation yes so then what we would teach our children is if you are not ready to be a parent then you have a moral responsibility to avoid sexual intercourse mm-hmm. that is the, the 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 message to our children mm-hmm. sexual intercourse is a gift to give us children are you ready to be a parent mm-hmm. no then you have a moral responsibility to avoid sexual intercourse mm-hmm. now are you ready to be a parent yes then it is very important that you seek out a good partner from the community mm-hmm. it is important you bring that partner to us as your parents so that we can interview them and see whether you have done a good job mm-hmm. and then we give you our blessings and you can get married and go on and have a family sex is not a stand alone and that's where the problem is that's where the problem is creating it as a stand alone yes once uh, you subject. once you teach it as a stand alone subject outside of the family unit then you have opened the door to all sorts of crazy stuff very true yes very so true. we shouldn't be um telling our children that sex is bad mm-hmm. we should be telling them that it is a gift that must be managed carefully true. by those who are ready to be parents because it comes with a lot of responsibilities mm-hmm. and you see if we approach it the way christians would we would tackle hiv yes we would tackle uh, teen pregnancies we would tackle uh, all stis mm-hmm. okay we would be able to manage abortions because the demand is actually driven by uh, illicit sex yes, yes. so it, it christians needs to understand that um, the way we would teach sexuality to our children is we teach sexuality sexuality basically just means your body and your relationships mm-hmm. so we teach that this is a man this is a woman this is how they relate this is what the family means for them to bear children this is what happens and one must be ready mm-hmm. for that institution before they can then engage, engage and we sex. can change everything mm-hmm. yes so why should it be that our our sexuality education a, a curriculum is developed by others wow. yes wow. That, that's that, that's a question so if you understand that then you understand parenting is again an office a very important one you very have important. no business teaching my child things that i am the one who is supposed to teach them and morality is my business mm-hmm. as a parent mm-hmm. the teacher can teach science they can mm-hmm. teach math they can teach everything else but they cannot teach my child moral values that is my business It's your business yes. and your god given responsibility and my god given responsibility and if we are going to sit down as a country and say we are going to teach sexuality to our children then we must sit and agree that the sexuality we are going to teach is consistent with my values mm-hmm. otherwise the school has no business teaching it true and and you see when you bring it as a health issue then you escape the spiritual aspect, aspect. that yes and you can't separate them yes you so so that's why the target is uh, is is uh, health mm-hmm. is comprehensive health education and in there we can put in sex right wow. now let me just go back a bit and just explain something that's very important mm-hmm. the first time sexuality was brought into the curriculum was through hiv and not many people understand So HIV comes is a very bad disease it is sexually transmitted it is killing people and uh, the UN and other bodies come and say it is important to have uh, a way of fighting HIV and then the, there is this ABC that is created okay so abstain if you can't abstain then be faithful 
if you cannot be faithful, then use a condom. You remember yes. the, the ABC of yes, fighting? The yes. Then uh, the government is told it is very important for us to fight HIV to streamline the prevention of HIV into all government programs, including education. Mm -hmm. And now you have children in Standard 5 those days who are supposed to be taught about HIV and how to prevent HIV. Mm -hmm. These are children, uh, Standard 5 would be about 11? Yes, uh, 11? they are about yes. 11. Yes, 11. Mm -hmm. and now it's called Grade 5, same thing. Yes, so 11-year-olds um, are just beginning their adolescence. So they're still in the age of curiosity. They haven't even started developing their secondary sexual characteristics. But a teacher has to go and tell them about HIV. And if you say HIV, then the question is, what is that? Mm -hmm. It is a sexually transmitted disease. What is a sexually transmitted disease? Mm -hmm. is, is a disease transmitted through sex. Mm -hmm. What is sex, Mualimu? Uh -huh. Yes? <laughs> now you are teaching uh -huh. uh, grade 5 children sex. They were not ready for that subject. Mm -hmm. But in, 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 um, in the curriculum, you are streamlining HIV prevention. Hmm. Then now the question is, how do you prevent it? Wow. Now, there was no difference between what you teach the children and what you teach adults. So, yes, make sure that if you have sex, you keep to one partner, be uh -huh. faithful. Uh -huh. And if you can't uh, be faithful, use a condom. What is a condom, Mwalimu? And this is a condom. It? And how do you use it? This is how you use it. Uh -huh. You have just taught children to have sex. Wow. Wow. So that is and where... And you're opening other doors. Other doors. To an 11, a 12-year-old. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. in, the, in the reproductive health policy uh, 2022, which is the one we were involved in assisting the government to make, it, it was made very clear that anybody below the age of 18 mm -hmm. is a child. Mm -hmm. So we should not be talking about teen pregnancy. We should be mm -hmm. talking about children who have been molested. Mm -hmm. The child is below the age of 18. They cannot give consent. Mm -hmm. They are not old enough to be able to, to give consent to sexual activity. Mm -hmm. That child has been molested. You don't facilitate it by giving the child contraceptives so they don't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yes, because then you are facilitating child molestation. Wow. It's, so it's you, child molestation. Yes. So the children, those who are below the age of 18, must be protected by the government from these people who are molesting them sexually. Mm -hmm. And the community and the Christians must come together to protect the children from, from sexual molestation. Mm -hmm. That would be the attitude. And then those who are older than that, then must understand the place of sex in the society. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying don't have sex. All we are saying is that there is a right time for it. Yes. 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 So wait until you are ready for the responsibility that comes mm. with the outcome of sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. And then take charge of your responsibility. Wow. If that is the way we are to approach this matter, we will all be in agreement. True. Nobody would be fighting. I totally agree. Yes. But when somebody with an agenda comes in and feeds systems without you opening your eyes, like the one I'm telling you about HIV, there are teachers who are teaching that religiously, who are Christian, mm -hmm. but they have never understood the damage they are causing to the children. And no wonder, I mean, the teen mm -hmm. pregnancy, it's increasing every year, yes. the rate at which you're witnessing this yes. whole issue. Yes, so the, 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 the sexual and reproductive health and rights is telling us that the way to manage teen pregnancy is to offer them contraceptives and abortion. Mm -hmm. So now we have, we have legalized and permitted child molestation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. So you are telling, uh, you're telling me as a parent to give my child who is eight, uh, 14 year old contraceptives so that they can have sex without getting pregnant. That is how I have solved the problem. Wow. If it's you think about it, it is horrible. True. Yeah, it is horrible. And um, you, you, how much money do we need to develop a policy if we sat as Christians the people who are in the Ministry of Health, 80% of them are Christians. They come to our churches. Yes, they do. But one or two of them facilitates this to happen in the Ministry of Health. 
why don't we prick their conscience so that mm-hmm. they start thinking as Christians and also help us to protect the children? Mm-hmm. Yes. The politicians who are in, 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 in parliament, 80% of them are Christian or they confess to be. Mm-hmm. Why is it that they would pass a law that would be against the family and destroy family? Very questionable. Yes. Very question. So, uh, just like in in the fight for for liberation uh, during the time our forefathers were fighting for freedom, the first people that you need to take out mm-hmm. are the traitors. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they are the ones we need to address. They are the ones we need to address. So anybody who's in the kingdom of God who is then not keeping in 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 line with what is is what we believe, mm-hmm. then that one is tear planted within the wheat, the wheat. Mm-hmm. and they need to and be uprooted. We, we need to call them out. I totally agree. No, we don't uproot them. That is for the Lord to do. For the Lord to do that. <laughs> but we call them out. Amen. Yes, and we tell them you cannot have our children being destroyed as you watch. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And yeah. just listening as we, as we sum it up and uh, mm. bring this discussion to an end, mm-hmm. I think bottom line is as a parent you need to take up that responsibility yes you need to take up that responsibility we, we, communicate mm. sexuality to mm. to your young ones mm. let them learn it from the home and i think mm. looking at it from the biblical aspect um Ephesians chapter 6 verses mm. 1 to 4 mm. clearly highlights that that training on matters to the every aspect of life mm. needs to happen mm. at the place of the home in fact the parental the the right of the parent over their children parental right mm. is 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 recognized uh, even in human rights documents and therefore even in our own country here KICD is not supposed to approve curriculums that parents have not approved mm-hmm. what is lacking is civic education for parents to understand that this is their responsibility mm-hmm. so remember anybody who is teaching your child is being a parent mm. so from media what they show on on media the reason why there are some things you shouldn't show during the time the children are awake is because of that okay that children must be protected from certain content um the reason curriculum must involve parents is because of that and what we need to do is organize ourselves as christians uh kcpf gives us a beautiful a beautiful um platform where we can organize ourselves to engage both government and civil societies and make sure that parental responsibility remains with the parent that whatever is taught in that class has okay. the approval of the parents mm-hmm. and uh, if we cannot agree as parents in Kenya that this is how we want our children to be taught about their sexuality that it is taught from an understanding of family the family unit as being the unit that will bring children into life and bring them up to the fullness of knowledge of God if we cannot agree then let us as Christians take care of our sexuality training of our children yes. and let schools teach nothing else except math and science awesome yeah beautiful mm-hmm. what a way to end this discussion mm-hmm. uh, and thank you so much i mm-hmm. hope that uh, you have gained something Mm-hmm. uh in this conversation we've had together with uh, Dr. Wahome mm-hmm. uh, Ngare and uh, feel free to uh, be part and parcel of this conversation in the comment section on whichever platform you're watching us from uh feel free to highlight any question uh any comment any thought that you have uh, it will definitely enrich this conversation and uh, just as Dr. has mentioned uh it is our responsibility in the home to teach about sex let teachers focus on other aspects uh, but right in the home it is the responsibility of the parents and this is simply because uh, you just don't know uh, the agenda or the direction that people out there have in view of, of of the influences that we are seeing taking place at the global front so god bless you and thank you so much for being part and parcel of this conversation asante you